What do we recommend for insect management um, in this part of the country? Again, fall, use your seed treatments. That will really help keep the turnip aphids down, things like that. In January, March, definitely look for cutworms and start looking for um, the addition of green peach aphids. Um, if you don't have the uh, canola handbook, we have some in the back. They have some pretty good images of all these various pests for you to see and, and study so you know what you're looking at. Um, <clears throat> if these guys hit threshold, you want to hit them. But we have a tendency to put insecticides in uh, going over the fields with Roundup and things like that when we're not sure where, if we've hit our thresholds. We need to try not to do that. We need to wait. We have um, evidence of some resistance developing in green peach aphids in various it kind of is sporadic. We have a field reported this year with the resistance. Uh, they've been sprayed twice and just cannot knock them down. So um, try to wait and spray for green peach until you hit threshold. Once we get to April and we start getting the seed formation, the pod formation, look for green peach and the cabbage aphids. Try to, uh, when the canola is in flower, avoid spraying at the high of activity for natural pollinators and bees. Um, try to spray early in the morning or late in the evening when those, um, at, uh, their activity, they've gone back to hives and they're dispersed. <clears throat> There's a good um, OSU fact sheet, the CR7667, on a general covering of all these different things. You might want to just go to the OSU's website and print that out. Okay, so aphids are the major concern for most growers. The way that um, we sample for them is we use a diagonal pattern. Start at the edge of the field and go diagonally across the rows. You don't want to go up a row. Um, you want to hit uh, as many different rows as possible. So you go on a diagonal, you stop about every 25 yards or so. You want to look at three plants, three consecutive plants. Start at the bottom, looking under the leaves, and work your way all the way up looking for various um, groups of insects or uh, aphids on them. <clears throat> you want to know if there's other damage to the plant in, in ways uh, such as spots or holes, things like that. <clears throat> what we've found that for every aphid on a plant, you have the potential to, be, to lose a half a pound of yield per aphid. So it's really important that you actively scout often. You can't just scout and come back a week later. You need to be really involved in canola. It takes a little bit more time and management than most crops, but it's worth it in the long run. But you need to be actively scouting regularly. Once you start emerging from winter and uh, things are greening up, get out in your field often. Um, <clears throat> again, the thresholds for green peach and cabbage, we don't know for sure yet, especially on the late spray. But <clears throat> use these as a basis to go from. And what I'm talking about when I say that sometimes we have a tendency to pull the trigger too soon is that on the top graph you can see that Early spray to prevent, the preventative sprays we put down when we're just going across the field to lay down uh, Roundup or something else. When we haven't really scouted and hit thresholds, that's when we're seeing a resurgence happen fairly quickly with aphids. If they're not at threshold, you have to go back in and spray again. Generally, that's during the time when natural enemies are coming in, when we're, we're into late March and April, when natural enemies should be out there, our parasitoid wasp, our lady beetles, and adults and larvae, our lacewings, our navids, those kind of natural predators are out there, and they get killed too. So you just continue this cycle of aphid resurgence. If you spray too soon and before you hit the, the threshold. What we like uh, and have been working with a lot of producers on is trying this, this plan where we certainly use the seed treatments in the fall and we hold off spraying that very first time as late as we possibly can, late February, early March. And hopefully what we're seeing then is that we have enough aphids, we knock them down, and we don't have to spray again 
in April, late, mid or late April, when natural enemies are coming back, and then you, you can hopefully get by with one spray instead of two or three on things. <clears throat> it's been working fairly well with the management um, plan with the producers we've been working with. Um, it does take some patience not to jump right on there and, and spray too soon. Um, if you can hold off and follow the, the threshold guidelines, you, you end up saving money. In 2010, we sampled 24 fields from January to May. Um, the red dots indicate how many fields per county. This was basically the timeline. With the cold, wet winter, we didn't see any aphids until early April. Once they started, though, they were grow uh, in huge numbers. And every time we tried to knock them down, they'd come back, especially down in southern Oklahoma. We had some cutworms last year, mainly kind of between I-44 and Highway 51 is where most of the cutworms we saw last year. <clears throat> Slow plant development because of the cold, wet winter. We also didn't see natural enemies until late, late April. And that's a problem. They could not, in any way, at that point, help with aphid control. 